Hi, everybody. I'm Chief Meteorologist and Hurricane Specialist uh, Ivan Cabrera. Welcome to our weekly roundtable here. I guess it's not a roundtable. It's no, kind of no just table. a stool, but that's all right. <laughs> this is an opportunity for us to talk about you know, conditions uh, that are occurring, any answer, any of your questions. And, of course, we've been uh, you know talking about the tropics uh, the last uh, few weeks uh, because we've had so much activity, and we are still going to continue to talk tropics. In relation to what's going on right now across uh, South Florida, but this is the talker. Look at these numbers, guys. Yeah. This is uh, impressive stuff. It has not stopped raining since last weekend. Yeah, it started uh, really over the weekend. We had that right, right over Miami, here. the International yeah. Airport. It was pretty much right over the sensor, four plus inches of rain, and, and that added to that total there. And that was the highest total of a day in the entire season so yeah, far, yeah, right? So far. How yeah. about that? Yeah, I mean, because you know, if it's not right, you know, under the bucket, that rainstorm uh, won't, uh, you know, get the check mark uh, at the. Uh, at the airport. It's interesting when they do the uh, drought monitoring, that's why they look at uh, soil samples and they just do this really comprehensive right. look at how conditions are. Because if you would just go by one sensor, it really doesn't tell you whether, you know, we're well above average or below average as far as drought conditions. And we're doing well here across yeah. South Florida. Almost too much rain now. Obviously, you can see we picked up uh, upwards of uh, three inches. This is uh, one of our maps that we use, and we haven't seen colors like this uh, in a while. Cindy, you and I were here uh, yesterday, the day yesterday. before. And, uh, it was just something. You know, the skies opened up, uh, and you know, we picked up several inches. And of course, the lightning. The lightning back. show last night was pretty incredible, and that, that came all the way from Collier County, Hendry County, all the way across the state, held together, right. which was fascinating to see how strong this thing was. Right. And then it started to die out just as it got into the western suburbs. I love cloud to cloud lightning because it's not dangerous. It <laughs> yes. doesn't scare you. There's no, you know, just huge thunder. And th the spider lightning, and that's what really just lights up the sky where it's like one after the other. Uh, and I'm sure photographers were out there yesterday just having uh, a blast with that. Yep. I tried to get a little bit of it because uh, I was right there in the interior here. You so were in one of those red pockets right out there. there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Less so across the coast. We've had actually this little pocket here from Hialeah and Ventura. Hollywood. This is rainfall in the last five days, so this goes back to include parts of uh, the weekend here. But Doral was one of the areas that it's been uh, that's been hit pretty hard the last a few days. Uh, there were cars stranded uh, there through the day on uh, Tuesday. Uh, roads had been closed; people couldn't get through. Uh, you know, drainage issues uh, continue uh, left and right here across South Florida. Ground is saturated now, yeah. so anything that we get right. from here on out is likely to cause flooding again. So. Yeah, good point. You know, when we start these events, you occasionally get you know flood advisor here and there. There. As the days wear on and you continue to rain, uh, all of a sudden you get five of them popping up because the ground just can't take any more water. So that is impressive. And why is this all happening? Uh, well, and it, uh, a front has been stalled along uh, the area there across central Florida. And what that does, of course, is it traps the moisture, the tropical moisture. Anything south of that is going to be tropical and juicy. And then everything north of that is going to be dry. What happens to this front, though? Look at all, uh, this thing is uh, now forecast to make it all the way down yeah. to uh, Cuba. Pretty impressive. And uh, Dave, the reason for that, this area of low pressure will continue to monitor as yeah, well. Yeah, that's what we're watching uh, right off the coast. And typically when there's a low just up to our north, you get that wind direction, which puts a lot of rain right over the east coast. But it's trying to move this thing through here by the end of the week. Moving it through. And then we're monitoring as well as the National Hurricane Center for yeah. potential development there. It's interesting. Uh, you know, we talk about easterly waves and these tropical waves. And of course, a lot of them form this time of year, tropical storms and hurricanes from those seedlings that come off Africa and some through the Caribbean. But another way you can get a tropical system developing is persistent low pressure along a frontal boundary. And sometimes you get that at the beginning of the season when the fronts are still trying to come through Florida, but they get stuck because now, you know, we're talking about June, jet stream changes. And so that's when we typically see these. But also in the fall, when the fronts do come down to the south, but they don't still have enough, you know, to really just kind of come through there. Now you get this persistent area of thunderstorms there. And so the weather uh, the National Hurricane Center is monitoring that. In fact, giving it a 40% chance of it developing. Why aren't we worried about that, though? I mean, that's uh, going to be headed up to Carolinas. Right. Yeah. They, they should have a very wet weekend up there in the Outer Banks. Yeah, North it's not going to be Carolina. not going to be a good weekend for, good them. Weekend for them. We're not. I don't think worried about because there's frontal boundaries there, and so it's not going to be a situation where you're going to get you know all of a sudden a hurricane popping up across the southeast coast. If anything, it, it could get a name, but it could be like a hybrid storm, subtropical. A storm Ophelia, that's the next name on the list, or Tropical Storm Ophelia, but it'll be a quick mover, and uh, as Cindy said, it'll head inland with, uh, inland with yep. some heavy rain and gusty winds. There's old Nigel, uh, you know, in the northern Atlantic, kind of like, uh, what was the last storm that we had? Uh, Margo. 
following right. in its yeah. footsteps, not doing yeah. anything. Staying east of Bermuda and then moving into the North Atlantic. The track, pretty good uh, agreement there. Nice thin track, so not expected to move much. Right. right. We were a little concerned last week when we were talking about, you know, uh, not Ni uh, uh, Nigel, in fact, uh, it was just a tropical wave. The models had it, you know, getting close to Bermuda, but after a few days, we realized this thing was going to book to the uh, north, and then it is going to just, uh, you know, uh, head northeast at around 30, 40 miles an hour eventually as it turns uh, fish storm. post tropical. Yeah, the yeah, fish, storm. fish storms. And it's a way to, you know, get this. Uh, the, the main reason we got hurricanes and tropical systems is to get all this heat content from the tropics up to the poles. If you didn't have tropical systems, uh, what would happen? Well, the poles would freeze. We'd have an ice situation all the way down to the mid Atlantic. Uh, we wouldn't be able to live there. And the tropics would just boil. So it's a way for the planet to kind of equalize. Uh, we do that with temperatures as far as air temperatures, but we do that as well with uh, the ocean heat content. And that uh, is good stuff coming up to the uh, north. Uh, the ACE we talk about accumulated cyclone yep. energy. We get into the weeds with that, but uh, it's coming up uh, with uh, with the numbers we've had and these storms over the last several weeks. Well, so there's that. Let's go to, to that. Right. Yes. yes. The, the so this is uh, right. This is the 70 percent chance of something something happening. But finally now. What we have is a tropical wave, and that's in the eastern Atlantic. Mm -hmm. uh, this has been monitored, and it's interesting. I'll go back a little bit because the National Hurricane Center now goes out seven days. So you see these blobs, these areas of potential development well ahead of a system developing. And this is what happened with this one. The wave and the thunderstorms were still organizing in over the continent of Africa, but now finally they're over water, and they look pretty healthy. And so we have a, a you know a good chance of this developing into our next tropical system. In fact, has a 70 percent chance of uh, doing that as it moves to yeah. the west. Develop in that area. That's not specifically a track, just the area where it may develop. And so. we always have to say that because the thing looks like a cone. I mean, there's yeah. no going around sure. that. I mean, it, it, you know, that's but it, absolutely. So if it develops here, then we we drop this area of potential development. And then you get the more traditional cone that we show you. Right. Uh, but we're feeling, you know, pretty uh, you know, confident that this will become uh, our next uh, or a tropical system. The uh, system off the southeast coast may get a name actually this weekend before this uh, gets uh, to that organization level. But w after that, you know, the models, we look at global models. Uh, the GFS is one of the American GFS <laughs> and the European uh, ECMWF. And, uh, you know, they're not agreeing on anything right now. That's normal towards the beginning. There's really not much there to focus on. This wave is now across the waters, and I think now they'll be able to now hold we'll get a better a idea bit. of what, how it'll develop and right. where it would be moving. Because we have yeah. an actual, you know, tropical wave, we call right. it invest and this will get assigned and then all the models will start locking in on that. So it's way too early. You're going to see as typical, you know, uh, online, you're going to see models uh, that depict the U.S. GFS uh, with some of the latest runs takes it uh, as a developing wave depression storm and by next week has it as a potential hurricane over the Lesser Antilles and over Puerto Rico. But that is what I call just fantasy land yeah. because the, the model just, you know, continue the errors that it continues to make every 12 to 24 hours are just exponential right. because it doesn't have the current conditions quite right here. So if you see a blob, a scary blob over Puerto Rico, that's what we're talking about here way too early. And the European, uh, European model has Nothing. barely a tropical Nothing. wave coming out. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, it just doesn't develop it at all. So until we get better agreement, you know, you're not going to hear uh, us talking too much about it because it, 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 we're just, you know, guessing at that point uh, with the system. So, but the, the trend has been very good for us lately, yeah. turning them. Absolutely. That's, which is it, a wonderful thing. So far, we haven't had any close calls here. So and we always good. talk about that. You know, it takes one. And uh, you know what? If they just keep, you know, curving out, curving sure. out, you can go through the whole alphabet, which, you know, we've gone through 14 names. And uh, I said to someone recently, oh, you know, we, we have seven more in this. And well, the alphabet's 26 letters. Yeah. Well, we skip, well, we Q, skip U, Z. X, Z, yeah. Y, you know. Tough so, to find names that right. start with those I think letters, we could, I, I think we could probably, you know, get a few. But anyway, they're not, they're <laughs> not, not going to. We're not the hurricane We're not the hurricane center. center. Yeah. There are 21 names. And if we go past 21 storms, there is now, you know, a, a, a backup list mm -hmm. that we have. We used to use the Greek 
Greek alphabet. Right. But that, you know, with climate change and, and these storms just continuing to really just uh, not just intensify, but also become, uh, you know, get these very active seasons, you need a backup list. And uh, we have it. I don't even know what the names are. I'm not going to look at it. Uh, yeah. We're going to focus on the <laughs> third column. And the first name on that would be Ophelia. Yeah. So we'll watch that closely. All right. So uh, this is the uh, front here. And again, that's the one that has stalled. And this is uh, the European model. And just watch what happens. It can transition from an upper low. That just means, you know, that uh, the system is still depending on this boundary for it, for its uh, energy, for it to continue uh, to really get going here. But as they persist, you can get a, what we call a surface reflection, a surface low. And that's when you get into a tropical system. You lose the fronts. It becomes a cutoff low. And it could, you know, gain subtropical uh, storm status. And that would be Ophelia. Watch Saturday here if you're going to the Carolinas or if you have friends and family there. Not particularly a, a dangerous setup here, but it is going to be just not so right. good with a lot of rainfall and a lot of wind. But for us, look at that. Uh, Might be, yeah. This would be. Give it a hand. It, yes. it's, right. It's one yes. of those things where it's like the, the, the actual storm could bring us some dry air because we'll be on the northern side of that. So now I don't want you to think it's going to be completely <laughs> sunny and dry and Dave's not going to have anything to do on Saturday. He'll still be here tracking storms. <laughs> yeah. But it, it's interesting as well because, you know, if, if this materializes, so we get these little pockets of cold air up above. And so as we are still warm and humid, that's not going to come here, the cold, dry air. It's going to be up above us. But we're still warm and humid at the surface, so we start building up storms. And you know, when the storms hit uh, that cold and dry air, uh, they can really get going. They tilt, they start uh, becoming strong to potentially even uh, severe. You know, with the gust of wind, you get that cold, dry right. air. Psh, right. At the so surface. less coverage, but the storms that do develop on right. Saturday could be, you know, on the stronger, stronger, potentially right. even as severe. We were talking about, hey, when was the last time we had hail? Well, this is the kind of setup that can bring you hail because yeah. the colder temperatures up above. Now all of a sudden, uh, you've got a lower freezing level, and so everything can get going. So this is uh, going to be the setup here. Yeah. So with that, let's take you to Dave's yes. field trip today. The, There's field Dave. Trip, uh, well, this what is are we on here? University of Miami, the Rosen Steel School. And I remember back when we had the ocean heat and we talked about the coral right. bleaching and uh, they saw that happening. They, they were worried. They went into rescue mode. They pulled all this coral in. They're looking at it. They're keeping it safe, but they're studying it because eventually they want to learn what coral works better and at adapting to these warmer oceans that we're seeing more and more often here. So, so these are live coral. That these we're are live at staghorn coral. And that's coral. the normal color. That, they that is the normal color, right. right. When they bleach, they turn white. They're right. doing a lot of research. We're, I'm putting a story together and they're going to put these back out and hopefully to start to get more adaptive to the warmer water. Fascinating. Yeah. I mean, they're just, you know, just to, to see them. Uh, I mean, I wonder if they know what's happening. <laughs> we'll get you back <laughs> in there. Uh, the temperatures have come down, though, you know, a little with bit, the last. Yep. Uh, yep. So uh, we had mid 90s at one point. Right. They weren't that warm uh, where, the, where the reefs are, but still well above average uh, and obviously they don't do well. And it takes, you know, thousands yep. of years for adaptation to occur. So we're trying to help them out here. Yep. Uh, and then, uh, you know, this is uh, one of those things where uh, Dave will continue to follow that. Uh, and it's the climate changing and uh, we have to uh, pay attention to it because, you yep. know, things are changing all around us. Uh, and it's part of, uh, you know, uh, human induced uh, global warming. This is uh, just something uh, that is uh, we need to talk about. Uh, more often here and one of the ways to mitigate it uh, is by projects uh, like that so yeah. uh, we're grateful for uh, them to to do that uh, the coral reefs in uh, Florida I mean that's our that's our treasure here that's treasure right, right. And they're all along the keys and up the East Coast thank you Dave yeah. and Cindy yeah. and uh, that is uh, our weather talk for uh, today hope you have an excellent rest of the week uh, and weekend and we'll see you back here next week